good tricks around how to use that. I'll show you a little bit. So let's say now we've gone through and kind of designed, we've built your app, now you've got to test it. Beauty of the platform is you can do almost all your testing on the desktop. So basically, the suggestions that we have is when you're going to build, a, build your content, build as if you're going to build for the desktop. Build as if you're going to build for the iPhone, but start on the desktop. You can do your whole test movie scenario, you know, your Apple enter, test movie, make changes, test movie, make changes, and really use the high performance, you know, rapid interaction, rapid design kind of mode that you're used to with Flash Pro. Um, on the desktop, we emulate certain desktop, uh, mobile features. Geolocation, for example, if you ask the geolocation APIs, where am I? It'll return to you the, uh, San, uh, the San Jose headquarters for Adobe. If you ask for the file system, we'll let you read and write out of the file system. There's a couple others we're thinking about doing, but those are kind of the key ones. There are some where you will need a device that's primarily multi-touch, because it's really hard to do it on the desktop, and we're trying to figure out what the right way to do is, an accelerometer. It's even harder. You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised there actually is an accelerometer in the, most of these MacBook Pros and a lot of other desktops, but you really don't want to start panning and shaking your computer around while you're going and building your app. Maybe you do. Tell me if I'm wrong. Sorry, what? Yeah, simulate it. Yeah, so we're actually contemplating building in, like, thinking about it, like you can pass um, a script file that kind of runs through a list of simulate, simulated behaviors. We'll see if that gets it in by the V1 product. It's no guarantee yet. So this is kind of where, so you've done your building, you've tested your app, this is kind of where it gets a little different. So what you see is when you're building for the web, and this is kind of the easiest comparison, you write your AS3, you publish to the web, and then you test it on a device. So, you know, a smartphone that's like a Palm Pre, you pull it up on your, on your test device, you run it, and that's what it is. iPhone's a little different for us. So what you do is you start with your AS3, you publish to the iPhone, test it on a device, and then submit it to Apple for them to put in the App Store. The submission process is pretty straightforward, actually, from Apple. They do a really good job of, you know, showing you what's going on and helping you understand how it's happening. Um, we've seen times on our apps that we've submitted anywhere between, you know, five days to 15 days, 20 days. It's right exactly what they tell you up front on apple.com. 96% of the apps are approved in 14 business days. Some are faster, some are slower. So they do a really good job of making this available for you to test and debug. So what I want to do is a little demo here. Um, courtesy of our friends at uh, Us2 Studios in um, the UK, we've kind of gotten some sample content that they're going to help us out, they're gonna, um, that I, they gave me the luxury of using. So what I want to show you is actually how this comes together. So I'm going to hide my presentation. I'm not having my one-on-one -on -one right now, as much as that would be fun. So what I've got here is a uh, little app that's called Bollets. It's an app that's built for, um, action, it's built in ActionScript 3. There's a couple of key bits that I want to show to you. So as you can see, this is just Flash Pro, using the regular old Flash Pro that you guys are used to, except this is the, um, this is the CS5 version a debug build that I have. So I'm going to just make Apple Enter. And I'm exporting a Swift, and I'm going to test this on the desktop. So you can see it's just kind of, it's a very cool little demo app that kind of shows some really cool interactivity of these couple balls moving around. You know, these guys are kind of random, and they're moving around, and I can click around, and kind of, they kind of follow me where I go. So, you know, kind of nice little cool demo here. So what you can see here in the code, and I'm not going to go through all the code just to show you. I'm going to show you some of the key elements that I was talking about. So first thing is... I've got the size set up to be my 320 by 480. So I'm making the assumption this is a full screen application. Remember, I mentioned 20 pixels are the status bar. I've made another change here, which is I've changed my profile to enable publishing for the iPhone. So I'm able to actually publish from the iPhone. As you can see here, I could actually change the publishing profile and pick one of the other destinations where this is available. One of the things that Apple makes available is um, a set of certificates that sign this application. So if I was to go into the settings a little bit, cross my fingers, sweet. So um, you, know, you can see some of the new settings that are available for the iPhone. One of the really interesting things is one of the great tricks that Apple um, kind of is using on the iPhone. So if you have your iPhones handy, this is another really good example. Click on the iPod um, app inside of there. What you'll actually see happen on the app is an image pop up right away but the app isn't loaded yet. There's, an app, there's a file that sits inside of an app bundle called the default.png. This default.png is the first thing that the uh, operating system does. It goes to the bundle, pulls that image out, and smacks it on the screen, and then starts the app to actually start up. This is actually really good for two reasons. One, 
is it actually gives the app time to start up. And two, it actually makes it appear to the user the app is starting really quickly. So what I've done is actually I've gone into, uh, let's see if I can do this right. I've gone to the library here. I found the background image here. Let's open it up. Uh, let's see. Where do I get this? Let me do this. No, it's actually, I'm trying to get the image. You can tell I'm totally an expert. Okay, there we go. So I've got this image here, which is kind of just, was just the background of the app. And so what I've done is I've actually taken that image out and I saved it as a file called default.png. And then what I did was in my publish settings, I actually told uh, Flash Pro that I want to include this inside the bundle. So what ends up happening in that case is when I actually go to publish this, this is embedded inside the file that gets created, signed with the rest of the content so that I, my app feels like it's going to be a lot quicker. And you know, the app's actually really quick. It just feels like it's even better. The other cool thing that we're adding is um, the digital signature components for an for a, for a iPhone application. So you'll see the term thrown around a little bit in the tool called IPA. That uh, stands for iPhone application. There's two ways that Apple um, basically shows off an IPA or an app. One is they either call it .ipa and that's what's put into iTunes, or .app and that's what's used inside of Xcode and, and the iPhone configuration utility. We, the IPA is basically a zipped up um, .app if you're familiar with Mac development. So basically, I can give a password here and this is gonna be a little bit tricky. For some reason my thing shows up in Japanese. I have a lot of iPhones, you can tell. Then let me just grab this value here. Okay, so basically what you can do is hit publish. And while this is going on, this takes a couple minutes. Um, whoops. Sorry, one last step here. I actually need to go select IPA iPhone as an output, and then make, I'm just going to make sure I don't have any icons right now. And then I hit publish. This takes a couple minutes to run. And so while that's running, let me actually go.